She has standed for beside the shore. What? I just came up with that. I'm like, I'm like come up with a. Girl, I'm know. surrounded by seashells. Yeah. Like? Seashells, seashells by the seashore. I sell seashells by the seashore. She sells them. She's. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> All right. Danielle Perez. Hey. You're on Check It Out. Do you know where this name comes from? No. Did you ever see Scarface? Yes, a long time ago. So the guy who, the, the little guy who was a comedian, he's uh -huh. like, check it out, oh, check it out. That was his catchphrase. Yeah, and I grew up in Miami. So, My generation, we grew up on Scarface. And you check can't get out. a tiger, so yeah. you gotta get the check it out. Tiger. <laughs> Where did you grow up, by the way? L.A. You grew up in L.A. Born and raised in L.A. Be to two Dominican parents, the only Dominican girl born and raised in L.A. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Like, I'm watching your videos, and you know, I see, I see you're Dominican. I'm like, New York. She's from New York. No. <laughs> what? I mean, you're too like, nice for New York? No. I mean, it's just like growing up here in LA. No one knows what a Dominican is, right? Everyone's like, Are you black and Mexican? Right. I'm just like, What? Like, <laughs> I'm Dominican. And, and, okay, so that's the thing. Like, you know, I grew up in Miami, where like Afro Latinos are, are yeah. a part of the culture. So here in LA, oh, no. like, they're they're very completely confused. thrown off. People are very, and also too, it's like. You know, it's other Latino people, yeah. right? They're just kind of like, it's yeah. the suspicion of like, I know you know what I'm saying, but right. like, I don't know why you know. Right, right, <laughs> right. So I, so you you grew up here. Did you get that all your life? Did you grow up around white kids, Mexican kids, both? Mostly like Mexican and Filipino. Okay. Because I like was born and raised in like Northeast LA. So mm -hmm. like Eagle Rock, Mount Washington, Highland Park area. And like Eagle Rock has like a huge Filipino population. Right. And so like the schools that I went to, like I went to St. Andrews Elementary School, mostly like Filipino, like Mexican Salvadorian, Immaculate Heart High School. So you went to Catholic Filipino. school. Like, oh yeah, so Catholic all girl. <laughs> that's a, that's a Caribbean Latino thing. We're gonna send them to a church school. We gotta right? send them to church school. <laughs> um, I mean, so th did you have to explain yourself a lot? Did you get used to it? Was it part of the thing? You were part of your mostly like it was like kind of like elementary school, middle school. It was a lot of explaining, and by like high school, it's like no one right. cares. Everyone's like so involved in their own yeah. stuff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> They're like, I really can't. <laughs> Did you know any other Dominican kids growing up? Uh, no. I So my dad, I guess, like, would go to these, like, there was, like, a Dominican social group. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of the older folks. And they would get together and have these parties. But I was, like, so young going to them. There weren't really other kids. It was, like... I was like, you know, 13 years old, and it's like all these like, you know, this everyone trying to get it mm -hmm. in, and I'm just like, I want to go home. <laughs> Literally, one time coming from like a Dominican party, like um, we came home to Highland Park, and there's like this taqueria. My, you know, I really want tacos. It's late night. My dad goes in, and I'm just like waiting. It's like, you know, probably one, two in the morning. I'm exhausted because I'm like 13. Right. My dad's just trying to party, party, puro party, you know? <laughs> but it takes forever. He gets, like, back in the car with the talks. I'm like, finally, you know? And then <laughs> I get inside, and I eat them. And then he's like, like, we were held up at gunpoint. Like, there was a banger that came in. <laughs> it's like, it's still very much Highland Park to me. <laughs> wow, that's hilarious. I was like, oops, my bad, sorry. Well, you always <laughs> like, like this. tacos. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Were you always like this as a kid, like this personality? Like, like are you funny, like gregarious, like it, cheerful? I don't know. I guess, like, I never thought I was, like, the funny one growing up. I don't know, because, like, my dad's a character. Right. My mom's a character. I really, I call her, like, the Dominican Larry David as a woman. Oh, I got to meet her. I mean, she's just, like, it's just off the wall. Like... <laughs> But, okay, so you, you had to notice, especially growing up, like, around Mexicans and Filipinos, how abrasive and aggressive Caribbean culture is, right? Like, people from the Caribbean, Cubans, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, you know, Jamaicans, you know, let's throw in even the non-Latino uh, uh, Caribbean people. It's it's just in your face, and it's forceful, and it's human. I guess, like, it just seemed normal, because, like, my dad, uh, he was an optometrist, and his office was in Echo Park, so there were a lot of Cubans in Echo Park. Oh, okay, like, I remember, yeah. like, Godmelo, Gigi's Bakery, all that, you know what I mean? So it was, like, I was around, like, Cuban people, right. but not really Dominican people. Mm -hmm. So it was, like, I mean, okay, I guess, like, it wasn't, it's, like, that s tone of voice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> It yeah. just seems normal. Right. I've been <laughs> beaten into submission <laughs> where <laughs> it no longer sends, like, a lot Alarm bells and like adrenaline in my body. <laughs> it's comforting. It's soothing. Are you an Aries like me? I'm a Taurus, but I'm Aries Taurus cusp. Ah, I'm April 23rd. Okay. So okay. like close. Are you, you know? done with the astrology? 
No, Sagittarius rising and Aquarius moon. Okay, mm -hmm. Sagittarius rising is that's another fire sign, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, we're, uh, Aquarius moon. Mm -hmm. Ooh, mm -hmm. simmering. Okay, um, I, I've pissed people off bringing up astrology. Like when I go up to like San Francisco and I hang out with like super militant atheists, <laughs> they're like, and you know, I always just joke around. I'm always Wait, just atheists like, atheists don't fuck with astrology. No, they fucking believe that there's nothing to nothing. Everything's just material. Everything's just matter. This doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Everything's matter. Nothing matters. That's but like, <laughs> wouldn't astrology, because it's like, it's we're talking about like fixed things, like movements of planets and stars. You are, Do you know what I'm saying? You it's are like, insightful. That's... Okay, so yeah, there's a scientific <laughs> reasoning, I believe, into like gravitational pull on when you're born. That's that's the, that's the, they just see it as like, you know, superstitious, you know, you know, oh airy God, fairy that's stuff. That's so wild. Because like, I, I went to San Francisco State for a few years. I was in the Bay Area and they like love all Those that. are the hippie ones. No, yeah. I'm, da those are my friends. But then they have friends that they bring to the dinner who are like super militant atheists. And like when I just start guessing people's signs, like that's a joke, it's a nice breaker. You know, like, yeah, oh, right? what's your what's sign? Your sign? Yeah, well, so, like, oh. this, 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 this one chick next to me who worked for the military and all this shit, <laughs> excuse you, she was like, <sighs> She's and like, I'm, I'm sorry, we yeah. didn't know what time of day yeah. like Bin Laden was born. Otherwise, we could have right. found out his location sooner, <laughs> yeah. according to your astrology. Yeah. yeah, she was just, I'm like, it's something. And she's just like, oh, God, it's just the astrology. And she just like looked over. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm not guessing your sign. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know what's like so wild? Because like. SF and like the Bay Area has been like oh, like you know the tech boom is like happening again and like all these like tech bros have invaded mm -hmm. SF. They right. like love astrology. Yeah. Like Zuckerberg and like Elon Musk, a lot of those they really confide. because I think and that they've gotten to the point where they they been... want an oracle, they want answers, and they want kind of certainty. I and astrology kind of gives them this at least idea of like because we're dealing with like fixed ideas like. Placements and there is science involved. It's yeah. not just superstition. So look, I'm not like a horoscope reader, but mm -hmm. like I started off not believing in it, but I came from my like my, my Catholic family in Miami is like, oh, what has California done to you? You know, <laughs> the crystals and, and uh, signs and they hate it. I my mom would get pissed off when I, I started asking. I was going to a crystal and a rosary. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's the same uh, thing. Well, well, I, I asked and my so, mom. Okay, the holy water, that's the wildest thing. You know what I mean? Because it's like, that's a magic potion. Yeah. You say, I got to go into this church, and I got to, as soon as I walk in, yeah. touch the holy water. The ash on the forehead. No, it's pagan as hell. Yeah. But when I would ask my mom for like the exact minute that I was born, she's like, why do you want to know? And she goes, oh. I'm doing my star chart. And she would get mad. <laughs> okay, we got to, okay, I want to talk about some of your humor. Okay, and, and I... <laughs> We're gonna get a little politically incorrect here. Uh -oh. I'll, I'll uh -oh. get canceled. Whatever. <laughs> I, you nail like white women when you imitate them. <laughs> they, that now that you said that you grew up in LA, that makes so much more sense. Like, is it because you have like like white friends and you just like you know know how to imitate like the perfect white girl, the brunch thing? I love the brunch joke. By the way, <laughs> I'm straight. I'm a dude. Love brunch. You love brunch. Yes. Okay, Sunday good. brunch is it's sacred. Do it because you can kind of like drink. That's I think what makes brunch so wonderful, right? Mm. It's like you, it's not brunch unless you're having a cocktail. Right. Otherwise it's just, it's breakfast. But you have a great joke about, about uh, you know, are you giving the server license to spit in your mimosa? What is it that you said <laughs> that like, they- It's possible. <laughs> Oh, is it possible? Oh. Yes. I'm just always asking the server, um, is it possible just being that girl? It's like, I know it's not on the menu, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you are so are you are you the, are you the type of person that like has a bunch of you know adjustments to the order? I'm not terrible. I'm not awful. You know, you say it with a smile. Right. And also, it's a question. Yeah. You can say we don't do that here. You know, you can tell me. You can put me in my place. So I have but, I, I have a girl that I hang out with. Not? She really has like a lot of you know instructions and adjustments <laughs> for things you know and they never get it right right oh, and no. i see it coming i'm trying to like you know so she tries to order a drink a certain way and i'm just looking at the server who's trying to like ask and i'm I just like, oh, them no. I'm like good luck and it, it's she's never... like i want a cold but yeah. no eyes what? you're yeah. like she's like a hot you know no well it's kind of like not on... <laughs> a margarita but with lime juice not the mixer or just a splash of the mixture what kind of mixture do you have is it organic is that all these things and I'm okay like, yeah no like, at that point right. See, here's the yeah. thing. Like, I, I feel that where it's like, this is what I want. Right. But we are, <laughs> you're dealing with someone who works in customer service. They're just trying to get their job done. At the end of the day, they have people behind you. Tequila soda with extra lime. Right. Girl, is done. It's done. <laughs> That's it. That's what you want. I mean, they don't make the mixer yeah. here. It's from a bottle. Otherwise, you would be ordering the bespoke margarita that they have on menu.
Bespoke? Wait, what's what's bespoke? Bespoke, you know, just like artisanal, just crafted, handcrafted. You're freaking they mix sophisticated. It. <laughs> I'm just bougie. I'm just you are bougie. <laughs> You are bougie, but I think that you've been sent to, to put bougie on its head, to turn bougie on its head with your humor. Um, so getting back to like a lot of your stand-up, obviously there's a lot of family, and we're going to get to the family mm -hmm. first, but like your friends, like, uh, so what are your friends like that you got all this, like the brunch stuff, the, you know, the white friends that, that love to pass casual racism by you, like you give them like, you're, you're like that friend of theirs that they can just like, oh God. Where, where does it all come from? Oh, yeah, no, that was, I mean, the women's march was a real, <laughs> the first women's march, it was a real mixed bag. It was like pussy hats and then people do, with all lives matter and it's like not everyone's getting the memo here I think that's <laughs> not everybody we, not the same page not the same page okay. I used to have a bit yeah it was like just like chants of Lena Dunham and Taylor Swift and it's like wrong people wrong people to be championing <sighs> this movement funny. that's <laughs> hilarious okay so do you how do you educate your friends uh, through humor or do you just laugh and just kind of you know go with the flow or uh, at what point do you interject Sure. I think a lot of it is like now most of the friends that I have are, they get it. And if they don't get it, it's like, I don't know if we're friends. You know, it just, it's, I think a lot of that was just kind of like growing up and you're in school and you're hanging out and you kind of start to see things and you laugh it off and then mm. you kind of realize, oh, this kind of speaks to who you are as a wow. person and maybe not. Now, have you ever had a friend that has gone to a comedy show and seen you kind of bring up something that they did in a joke and then the light bulb went off in their head? No, but a few of my friends who I went to their bachelorette parties haven't seen me do my bachelorette party material. <laughs> okay, can I be there when you start doing the material when they're there? And Melanie. It's all good. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I, I want to be there when that happens. <laughs> yes, and they're going to be but like, Also, oh. they've been married for many right. years, and they're they're fine now. It's, yeah. you know, <laughs> enough time, I think, has passed where we can we can all laugh at this. But, like, okay, so I live with, like, my bestie, Giance, and uh, her boyfriend, Pat, and I mm -hmm. make fun of them, and mm -hmm. they're, they're fine with it. Like, they're, they're keto. <laughs> Nuts. Really sad. <laughs> Every day. At least they cheese, right? Every day is a struggle. But imagine eating so much cheese that you crave a leafy vegetable. Like, imagine doing that to a person. Wow. I don't want to live in that world. Oh, I? neither I do, do I. Neither do I. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Nana. Nana? How do you Nana. say Nana? She's your grandmother on which side? My mom's side. Your mom's side. Yes. Okay. Um, so I, I have, you know, uh, my, my grandmother, my abuela Lola, is sacred to me. Mm -hmm. She is ballsy, cantankerous. She will crap on anyone at any time. She doesn't Love care it. what anybody thinks. I feel like her and Nana would be great friends. Yeah. So <laughs> tell me about your relationship with Nana and, and, and how that's gone in Oh, your my life. God. Nana, Nana's a character. I mean, she really... <laughs> Think about Nana, I mean, she calls it like she sees it, right? You know, like, oh my God, she always obsessed with the pelo liso, always pelo liso. Mm. The fact that my hair is curly right now, I mean, just an egregious, an right. affront. I remember like in the pandemic, I was hanging out with like my mom, my sister, and we were like outside and all of our hair was curly. Cause usually, you know, we get like blowouts, we straighten or whatever. I was like, if Nana saw us right now, she'd be so angry. Like she would be furious with us. <laughs> but like I don't know she's a woman that when my my mom like you know she's hippy -dippy. my mom's very hippy dippy mm -hmm. she went to like Boston ceramic school and stuff like that and so she like dyed her hair with henna my mom's like you know in her 60s my nana's you know an older woman she sees her and she is just like what's up with your hair she can't mm -hmm. stand it <laughs> a week later my mom gets a check in the mail and literally, it just has a post on us, like, por su pelo. Wow. That's it. <laughs> like, and so then I called up Nana, and I said, I heard you were subsidizing hair care. And ah. I was like, I'm going to need a check, too. She's like, but your hair's really nice. I was like, that's because I spend money on it. And I'm out, so I need more. Right. I did see the Instagram video where, where you talked about getting taken to uh, um, get a haircut when oh you were young God. by your Nana, and yeah. then they just cut off all your hair. They just cut but it off. I love off. all the hairdos that you had. Oh, my all gosh. All the short hairdos. It was and so fun. Oh, my gosh. I wore, like, I want to say almost, like, 10 wigs in that because I played, like, my Nana. I played the hairdresser. Right. I played, like, me as a little kid, like, my mom. Like, it was... 
<laughs> That's awesome. How'd you get into comedy? Let's get into that origin story. Oh my gosh. Um, so my bestie Madison Shepard, also amazing stand up. Mm -hmm. She was living with a stand up in Hollywood and we went to a few of his shows. The third show, mm -hmm. I was like, he's not funny. I'm funny. Madison, you're funny. And I texted her, I was like, girl, how do we do stand up? <laughs> And so she was like, oh, okay, uh, we go to open mics. So I found an open mic in Hollywood at Rock Paper Cafe. It doesn't even exist there anymore, but we went. It was a Saturday. I really thought we were just like, going to observe, like, mm -hmm. see, check it out, what's going on. She's like, we're so brave. I was like, we're brave watching people speak in microphones. She's like, no, we're brave because we're about to speak in microphones. I was like, mm -hmm. what? Had nothing prepared. She wrote my name down. I got up there. I just started talking about my life, and people laughed. And I was like, oh, my God, I need this for the rest of my life. Like, I've never done heroin, but stick it in my veins. Like, this is it. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. And so at what point did it become professional? I mean, like, now you're, you're – are you touring at all, or are you uh... – I am uh, you know, working on the tour. Okay. Uh, we'll be performing at New York Comedy Festival. Don't have the date yet, okay. but still, you know, in the works. Excited for that. You get your yeah. Dominicans out there in New York to come out to yes. come see an L.A. Dominican. But that will be in November. Yeah. Um, so at what point was it like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is who I am. I'm doing this for a living. This is part of my I'm, this is, I'm a professional comedian. I think it was really soon after mm -hmm. because it was one of those things where I, I did stand up at that open mic and then immediately it was like, oh, my God, I got to go to the next one. Mm -hmm. And so we found another one that same day. Oh my God, the Lexington, right? In like <laughs> Skid Row, LA. And like we go there and, you know, get there early, number 24 on the list. I mean, just like they're waiting for hours. Yeah. And I get up and I bomb. But I was like, I still, I want to fix it. I know how to right. fix it. I can make it better. And I think just because I started in LA, mm -hmm. you see people like achieving like the landmarks and the dreams. Like one of the first kind of, comedy hangs I went to was like seeing like Alan Strickland Williams like do his Conan set at Echoes Under Sunset with like all the other comedians in the community and kind of being like oh okay so that's like a goal that's like a real you can like actually achieve that and do mm -hmm. that so I just have to like stick with what I'm doing mm -hmm. and like treat it as like a job right right and um so at what point did you get into acting before or after was the was the goal always to act no I honestly like didn't kind of think like I would be able to act because like I really liked acting as a kid like mm -hmm. I loved it when I was like in middle school uh, elementary high school like I was always auditioning for the plays and stuff but it was like chorus you mm -hmm. know <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot of that is like you know like I didn't see a lot of like Latino people mm -hmm. on television or in mm -hmm. movies honestly that were like the cleaning lady right. you know and so even though like I wasn't in like a performing arts high school mm -hmm. or middle school I think that those kinds of ideas of like well what can this like kid be mm -hmm. you know weren't necessarily and especially there. growing up as an Afro Latina in LA you're, you're you're you probably feel like lost in the cracks you're not seeing like yourself a lot you know no yeah right. it's like I didn't see myself like in actual media and so then to like be in like a school setting where it's like let's be real we're all teenagers pretending to play people in their 30s 40s right. 50s like none of us no, this isn't real mm -hmm. like this is all very make-believe but I think even like these ideas of like what's an ingenue and what should mm -hmm. she look like or be I didn't fit that mm -hmm. um even though it was like a, a passion of mine I really liked it but also at the same time growing up in LA it's like I knew people that were actively really pursuing like the arts and were like taking classes and like booking things and you know, I understood that it was like a real job and a real, like, you had to have a real work ethic around it. It wasn't just like one day, oop, I'm an actor. Do you think that growing up in L.A. is an advantage if you want to pursue entertainment or not? Um, I think it's an advantage in that you have, like, a real foundation of, like, mm -hmm. people around you. You have, like, friends and family that do not give a shit mm -hmm. about the industry. That have real jobs that, like, care about you for you. Mm -hmm. And so everyone that you're kind of meeting in the industry is is work. You're mm. able to kind of separate that, but still have the comfort of like, I can actually do mm. shit for me and hang out with friends that like actually genuinely make me happy and it's not like work. Right. You know? Yeah, uh, no, but it gets, it gets, here's the thing, especially with comedians, because they, 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 they're typically in different places and then somebody either shoots off, gets all these gigs, you know, um, being friends with comedians, is it tough? 
when like something's working out for you and not working out for your friend and uh, you know like you know uh, sometimes people have a hard time being happy with for somebody else it's really nice when, so, when you can tell somebody's really happy for you no matter what so is that dynamic like like a reality like being friends with like other actresses and comedians and stuff like that i think for like my real friends and i think you know that comes with like it's like who are like my people that i really like ride with and I, I'm really lucky that a lot of the people that I kind of, like, started with, like, I genuinely care about them as people. So mm -hmm. when they get something, I am excited. Yeah. I'm happy. Like, the reality is not everyone's going to get everything. You can't get everything. Right. You, you know what I mean? Like, the thing about stand-up is, like, we're all unique individual talents. Mm -hmm. And that's literally what makes us successful. Mm -hmm. So it's not, like, you're not in competition with anyone you're like in it to be the best you, yeah. right? Yeah. So like, I am ha I'm like happy right. when my friends get stuff. And then I know it's like, they're getting stuff, it's on the way for me. Mm -hmm. It's gonna look different, but it's like, we're all coming up together, mm -hmm. you know? Like if a friend like gets in a position where they can recommend people, who are they gonna think of? They're gonna think of the people that have been along the journey with them, yeah. you know? And like, when I'm in a position where I can recommend people and lift people up, it's like, yeah, I want to, I want to win with my friends. Yeah. You know. Well, look, you're definitely winning now. I know that because of strike rules, you can't promote uh, some of the stuff that you're working on. There mm -hmm. is one thing we can talk about, um, but I will. I just want to run through some of the credits for our viewers. Oh, sure. um, you, you, you steal the scenes when you're on Russian Doll. I wanted you to explain what Russian Doll is about. You can't because it might overlap with with, <laughs> with promoting, but check it out on Netflix. I love the star of the show. She was in Slums of Beverly Hills, right? Natasha Leone's incredible. Yes. She's so wonderful. Like, truly, like, working with her mm. was, like, a, a, just a literal dream. Like, I had no idea that yeah. that, like, could even happen. She's, you know, like, because really I grew up right. just idolizing her and yeah. loving, like, everything she's been in. Fantastic. And, um, and, and that's back. And then you were on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Can you say what season you were on? Uh, the latest season that's streaming, yeah. That's streaming right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, I got to check it out. I think, have I seen the last season? And there's like, uh, I know, I'm like, oh, really walking the line. But there's <laughs> another really amazing Latina who was like, it was like her breakout mm -hmm. in that season. And she's incredible. Okay. And you have to, like, I'm obsessed with her. When I saw her? her, oh, my God. I It's like I know the character she plays, but I don't remember. It's really, <laughs> but I can't remember the um, her actual name, but she is. Oh, yes. She is, yes, yes, yes. No, we've had her here. She she's amazing. Like, she, I'm obsessed yes, with her. She was on, wasn't she on Eastbound and Down? No. She, uh, there was another one that she, she was, was on, on like, uh, an a studio network show right that she had like a, a recurring guest star on. yeah uh, uh, an hbo show but hold on but uh, latina on Kirby. she the, the faces she makes so she's so, so good. I, I, I i i i can say it's she's she's just like it's like oh wow this girl is like like she's a superstar Kayla like, Monterosa yes. Mejia. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh Steals, my god the the, the the dancing in the in the and then the, the whole thing is that she has to her Larry, physicality yeah. is like that's what's like so incredible it's like she's yeah her physicality is so cool but then also just the way she chooses like to emote like it's just all like her brain must work in just like a yeah. truly amazing different way totally because it's like it's just it's really cool to watch well i love when somebody plays like a, a, a uh, on a, a purpose like so she basically plays a bad actress that larry has to have in a show to get it done it's a <laughs> typical carby enthusiasm type of weird plot and like the studios and i think it's hulu they're the people in the, in the in in on the show which is weird because the show airs on hbo whatever like do they get permission to do anyway um you know they, they basically are like what is going on but he can't explain why she has to be on the show and she plays it like this actress who's just either really over the top or just really understated and it's just so funny all right so i gotta have her on the next batch of check it out um now the project that we can talk about because yes. it's produced by a24 who signed an interim agreement with the yes producers. we love we it it's a24 and it's called dicks the musical yes what is Dix the Musical about and what's the what's your role on this project? Oh my god, okay, so Dix the Musical, it's about two identical twins who were separated at birth, but now are captains of industry and big, busy businessmen, and they got big dicks, and they want to sing about it, and they want to get their parents back together. It's basically parent trap. <laughs> That's hilarious. Who And who are the guys that play the dicks? It's Aaron Jackson and Josh Sharp, and so they're guys, like, out of UCB, like, New York.
York and it was like a stage play at UCB and like they've been like literally I think like the inception of it was like 10 years ago okay. and now like Larry Charles is directing it directed Borat directed nice. lots of Curb Your Enthusiasm um, and yeah and, and Megan the Stallion Megan the Stallion is in it her feature film debut nice Bo and Yang's in it it's in, it's like a stack crazy no, wild I cool cast i can't wait to see it and and so and now this is a film yes. that's called dicks, dicks the, the musical, musical yes uh and your role i'm in the opening musical number Ooh. yeah so i get to interact with the dicks i get Ooh. to smoke i get to sing and dance it's very fun <laughs> <laughs> smoking is She's a thing cool. is it a cigarette cigarette <laughs> you're so funny did everybody just become friends with you on on set <laughs> everyone just becomes your friend, right? It was really, everyone was so nice. Like, the choreographers were like these, they're not twins, but they look like twins. <laughs> I was like, did they hire you because you look like twins? That's funny. <laughs> but it was really, it was a blast. Like, Oscar Montoya, um, he, I, I love him. I, uh, he does, like, Spanish Hockey Presents. And he's, like, on that show, um, Oh, shoot, we can't. Well, he's on Minx. But, uh, like, it was really cool, like, working with him, like, mm -hmm. on a film. Because it's, like, you know, I've, like, done his show, right. like, live shows and stuff. And so. That's awesome. It was just really fun. And when does, it, when does uh, the, this come out? It comes out September 29th. September 29th. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, we're going to be dropping this right right before. That's Ooh. awesome. Okay, and, well, and did you get to meet Megan Thee Stallion? I did not. I did mm. not. But I heard that her trailer was stocked with, like, some really cool things. She had her nail tech in there. Um, her nail tech? She had her nail tech on set. <laughs> nail I technician. Like, I, I aspire to that. Because <laughs> they're I, looking very busted today. <laughs> wow, I really just put that out no, there. No, I like it. <laughs> wait, you have a joke. Wait, what horrible. happened? Okay, so we got to get to a joke that you made yeah. about starting to date a woman and yeah. you had the nails. I had the stiletto the sharp, gel extensions. So is, is, are you still dating the but same this woman? Is, and, this and, is... <laughs> And this did she ask you to like like file them down? No, but this is lady friendly. So if you see me at like gay astrology or like any <laughs> cafe semi tropic, we're good to go. Don't have no fear. That's right. Do you know Jade Catapretta? <laughs> oh my God, yeah, she's, she's so great. She's so funny. Okay, so she's another she's female like comedian love, who's right? now also dating yes. a woman. Mm -hmm. Is there so not? I I don't often get into like people's personal lives if they don't want to get into it. But is there, <laughs> can you tell me about what that's like and and. I mean, I guess, you know what it is? It's like, I feel very, like, shy around women because it's like, I don't want to, like, treat a woman badly or poorly. <laughs> you know, like, men, who cares? You don't want to <laughs> add to her trauma. I don't, because I know. It's like, she's lived through so much. <laughs> I'm a woman, and, like, to add to that, I wouldn't. But also, too, I think where it's like, you can, it's like, sometimes it's like, okay, I think they are, like, are they into me, like, as a friend, or, like, are, is it more, like, are they just, like, a friendly girl mm -hmm. who's, like, oh, yay, girlfriends, or, right. like, is it, like, ooh, you're trying to right. have a little but I feel, time. <laughs> well, I feel between, between women, it's easy to, like, back out of that situation if it turns out that you misinterpreted, but with a guy... It, it, it's like a line that's crossed. Really? You know, like if you're with, with if you're with a guy friend and 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 you you don't know if if okay maybe he's is he picking up a a, a mixed signal? I I know with guys it should be like clear from the get go. Is that what you're thinking? Like, is there any misinterpreted? I guess the thing is because I I think I just like have a finer like gaydar for lack of better terms uh -huh. like with men. I don't know. Like, right. just I've. Like, you know, I had, like, a gay friend in high school. I didn't know he was gay. You know what I mean? Right. But then it's, like, realizing, like, oh, yeah. Like, um, but just, like, you know, go to gay clubs a ton, like, in SF. Right. And, like, even, like, it just, I've always had a lot of, like, gay male friends. Mm -hmm. And there aren't really, like, I mean, there are more now, but they're not really a lot of, like, lesbian bars or clubs. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just, it was, like, well, we also, too, like, gay men, like, in terms of, like, LGBTQIA like activism stuff. It's like white gay ma white gay males like are mm -hmm. very centered in that. So mm -hmm. it's like I feel like I can pick you guys out, but I don't right. necessarily know what like gay woman or queer woman. Mm -hmm. it also, too, I think like because like I didn't really like come out or like identify until like my thirties, mm -hmm. you know it's kind of taken, you know what I mean? It okay. wasn't like I was like a little kid right, and it was right. like, I love girls, right. you know? But And I think, but it's like, maybe if I was kind of 
raised, and, and it's not that my parents aren't like tolerant or anything, and like I grew up where like literally all my neighbors were like pretty much gay, like mm -hmm. Maureen and Irma, Larry, <laughs> Larry David, <laughs> like, um, like, uh, or Gary and Larry, <laughs> <laughs> Gary and Larry, but like, um, it was like culturally, do you know what I mean? Where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, being queer, like people are just queer, mm -hmm. people are just gay, you know? Mm -hmm. It was like kind of being raised in a society where like, well, straight is the default. Right. So you kind of just assume like, okay, I'm straight. Yeah. Until you're Especially like, maybe not, you know, it, it's a spectrum. Okay. I guess like that's the thing. It's like, it's a spectrum. Like, it's not like, do you, and do you, you're all fully one or the other. Maybe, right. maybe some people are, but right. I think most people are somewhere in the middle. So unless Kinsey, you think, Kinsey scale, right? exactly. So unless you think it's like a, a thing that you can explore, mm -hmm. you're not necessarily okay. tapping into it. Mm. I like it. I'm down. Last thing before we <laughs> before before we go. Um, wait, for, before I ask you the last question, is there anything else that you needed to promote in these days of tricky? I can't right, promote this. Can't I promote know. that. We got Dix the musical. We got your stand up. People can go on your Instagram and see you're performing yeah. here in LA. You'll be in New York for the New York Comedy Festival. Yes, uh, in New York in November okay. for New York Comedy Festival. But um, uh, oh, I'm gonna be on this really cool show. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nerdy, which isn't my vibe. Okay. <laughs> She's a cool girl. She's a fun girl. But uh, it's called Crossword. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the puzzle show. Um, Zach Sherwin hosts it. But I'm going to be, I guess, like puzzle solver. And I did it years ago before the pandemic. He's created a brand new crossword puzzle with like this guy who like went to Harvard that does like crossword puzzles for like New York Times or something. It's like all these brainiacs. Nice. and. I'm a ding dong trying to solve it. Nice, <laughs> nice. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's a live show at Dynasty Typewriter on the 19th. Okay. Well, yeah. I might go check it out. I got a feeling you're gonna get you're gonna get a lot of the answers right. All right. Last question. Yeah. Are you really a hoarder? Because I saw that you were on some hoarding show where they kind of tried to, to you know uh, organize your closet. Did my sister put you up to this? Yeah, she did. Oh my no, god. No, Nana put me up to this. You and Lilac. <laughs> Nana and Lilac and you. Yeah. No, I am not a hoarder. Despite what my sister alleges. Even though I still have that treadmill from The Price is Right in my living room in a box, I'm not a hoarder. <laughs> but uh, I did have a life change. My closet was transformed by Katie French, uh, the creator of Laugh Cry DIY, this amazing like makeover YouTube channel. Um, she, oh, she's actually uh, Chris Estrada's partner, mm. and she's a great, hilarious comedian, but... Um, if you want to see me just fail repeatedly to do things like drill and paint and craft uh, <laughs> and have awesome. a beautiful closet at the end of it, despite my best efforts, <laughs> check that out. It is very cool. Um, <laughs> Danielle Perez, you've been on Check It Out. Oh!